Six string splies, happy new year! This is our first video of 2021, so it is still acceptable to say happy new year halfway through and um, halfway into January. Recently, we did a YouTube poll and asked uh, you guys, our subscribers, what wiring tutorial you wanted to see next. As you can see, um, something more exotic uh, was the clear winner, um, as expected, and, and this is what we're going to be exploring in the next uh, the upcoming videos. Uh, I'll explain why. So since the beginning of this year, so barely two weeks, Six String Supplies is now a dealer for freeway switches and we're going to be incorporating these into our range of pre-wired kits. Um, so today we're going to show you how to wire the 5B5, aka the 10-way blade switch, uh, into a strat. Um, now these switches are not new on the market by any means. They, they have been around for a few years now and there are actually some great demos by some high profile YouTube channels demonstrating the range of additional switching options and tones that are made possible by using these uh, these switches. Um, I'll put the links to these demos below in the description. So I'm afraid I will not be demoing. I won't put you guys through that pain, but I will show you how to wire it. Um, and then in the next video, we'll move on to the Telecaster version, the, the, the six way tele wiring. So we'll do that one as well. And then after that, we've also got the Les Paul toggle the three by three toggle switch which is essentially um a three-way toggle switch times two so it's got six six positions on that one um the beauty of these switches is that they are really discreet um, so we do actually have a nine-way strat wiring diagram on our website um as you can see on the screen it, it is a great setup but it is messy complicated uses two push pull pots um in reality, uh, too much fuss. Um, so we're, the, with the freeway switch, the main wiring itself is clean. We're just using three standard pots, as you can see here. Um, and as you would expect, all the switching is done via the switch. And um, what I mean by discreet is that the 10-way blade switch just fits into your standard strap pick guard, assuming it's um, you know properly sized. Um, and the beauty of it is, rather than faffing around with push-pull pots, you are simply flicking the switch up and down like that so you've got your standard five positions and then you've got another five on the upper bank they call it so you've got upper bank and lower bank so here i've got a pit guard a set of single coils and we're going to go uh wire through the whole thing uh, it'll be our usual setup so we'll go through it step by step and we'll have diagrams on the screen um just to show you what wire is going where um, I'm actually going to be using the freeway wiring diagram taken off their website. They have quite a few different setups for their, their, for their products, thankfully. Um, the diagram that took my fancy is the 10-way series parallel setup, which you can see on your screen there. And if I zoom in onto what the different switch positions do to give you an idea of the advantages of adding a 10-way switch into your Strat. So it's very important to note that we do keep the classic five-way switch positions that we all know. Um, I was going to say that we all know and love, but I know not many people love all of the positions. Um, but they're, they're familiar, which is the key. Um, but the second bank of the switch, so when you flick it into the second bank, um, this enables an extra five positions. And in this case, it enables um, series combinations, um, having the neck and bridge pick up on together, all three pick up simultaneously. Um, the neck and bridge is actually possible using the blend control setup we have covered previously or the Gilmore mini toggle on switch to put the, the neck pick up on. Um, it's a really, really nice combination. But with this switch, you can have both pickups on in parallel and in series. So um, just to give you an idea. Right, that's enough waffling. With no further ado, let's crack on. OK, so the first thing we've done, um, as you would do with any guitar circuit, is to quite simply... You want to ground the outer lug on the, the volume pot. That's what makes it um, in, into a volume control, essentially. So all we've done is just bent the lug back uh, onto the pot casing and filled it with solder. You will notice um, we haven't got a ground wire connecting the three pots together. Now, nine times out of ten, um, I always, always recommend it. There's no harm whatsoever in reinforcing a ground. Uh, I'll show you why in a moment. Um, and that's because we're using this aluminium strat 
pit guard plate so it actually covers the whole pit guard as you can see um so for that reason um and because it's a very good quality i think it's a genuine fender part um we are, are not too fussed over that so that's that however if you are using a pit guard that's just got the standard foil like this this is just obviously a standard one off the shelf um i would definitely reinforce your ground and connect the pots together um the reason being that foil as you can see here and this is quite an extreme example to be fair but that foil does get eaten away fairly quickly um you by the the teeth on the serrated washer so whatever pot i put here will not be grounded to this one via the foil because as you can see the foil has been scratched away <clears throat> starting to scratch away there it's actually i mean it's a very very thin layer of foil um so that's why i'd always reinforce your ground you will not create a ground loop in a passive guitar circuit anyway with no further ado so like i say we are following the freeway wiring diagram uh, and they've opted for the the dual tone capacitor wiring um so they've gone for tone control for the neck pickup and a tone control for the middle pickup so we're just going to pop our capacitors in um the same lug but obviously it's, it's, it's mirrored so <clears throat> the outer lug on each pot so for the the second tone control we're grounding uh, we're, we're putting one end of the cap into that lug the other end to ground and likewise on the neck tone control one end into this lug and we'll put that one to ground as well just like that there so you can see i've got the two caps in one end going to the respective lug of the tone pots and the other end being soldered to ground on the pot casing right now to the interesting bit onto the switch so actually if i can try and show you this without it reflecting off the light uh they are <clears throat> I'm assuming they're gold-plated contacts. They might be brass. I don't think they are brass, thinking about it. Right, um, so as you can see here, there are quite a few different um, solder points here, um, but they are actually lettered or abbreviated, I should say, um, to kind of help you in terms of what goes what. So NG is neck ground, NH, neck hot, OP or signal, OP, um, output gd is ground a and b i'm not actually sure I, i'm just going to assume that they are the the two common lugs that you'd have on a standard five-way switch for example uh mh middle heart bg bridge ground bt i'm not actually sure bridge tone maybe and bh bridge heart i'll check what the bt is um if i find out i'll edit the description in the video now the only problem is this is the abbreviations are visible that way but obviously in our guitar it's upside down and for this video it's upside down as well um so for that reason we will follow the usual format of having the the mini diagram in the corner of your screen for each connection that i make just so if you do get lost or it's not as clear especially with the light reflecting off the um circuit board there um then you'll have a clear idea of what we're doing so we'll do that then um so what we're going to do is we're going to wire up the switch and then we're going to hook up the pickups um and that essentially it is all there is to it. Okie dokie, so the first thing we are going to do is connect the switch uh, to the volume control. Um, so I'll try and get in here as close as we can and unfortunately as all the contacts are, uh, are plated it's reflecting off the light a bit there so it's upside down but OP is the output. Now you'll also see that each contact here or solder point has two holes so what I'm going to try and do and that's obviously because you might need more than one connection on one point so what i'm going to try and do where possible just to make it easier uh, for me more than anything is to put all the the contacts on the switch or that connect the main circuit uh we'll put on the lower uh the lower band so to speak and the upper hole here is where we'll put our pickups in um but they are both <clears throat> exactly the same it's obviously just more space to solder so we're going to start off just by putting in um, some cloth wire here and we're going to solder this this is the output which is which uh is what you'll connect to the jack socket of uh, the volume control excuse me um so i'm just letting the soldering iron heat up so i'm using cloth wire here um you can use any wire you want really um Just 
just like that. And then we're going to connect that to the <clears throat> uh, the input of the volume control there. So again, just cut it to length. You have to excuse my hands. It's quite a bit more fiddly than the standard switch, obviously. And obviously, what I mean for our pre-wired kits, we add a treble bleed in here, but uh, the treble bleed is optional. So we're just going to go with the standard setup in that sense. There we go. And like I say, just follow the the diagram in your screen <clears throat> in the corner if that's uh, easier for you. And the the solder point directly to the left of it. GD, well, again it's upside down, but GD is the ground, so we're just going to run a ground wire, uh, some black cloth wire I'm using, just to connect the cloth, uh, the switch to ground, and it, <clears throat> uh, it's optional of course, but tape is your friend, so I'm just going to tape that to the pot, just to stop it moving then you obviously remove your tape you push the cloth back into place and then we're just going to ground this to the pot casing just on the side there cut to length Push the cloth back. And I'll just pop it on the side. like so okay let's move on to the next connections okay so the next one we are connecting nh which is neck hot which is where actually we will be picking uh putting our neck pickup uh hot wire um but just before we put the pickups in we're gonna we need to connect nh uh to b so like i said uh, out of the two holes i'm gonna put these to the low on the lower band uh, and then we do need to connect b to um another connection after that, which is what we'll use the upper band for. So I'm just going to thread this into the hole. Just tape it down. Clean your soldering tip if you need to. And then we're connecting the other end <clears throat> into hole B, which is a couple across. So exactly the same principle. one thing i have noticed straight away about these switches now this is actually the very first time i've wired up one of these switches um and it's actually very similar to the cts push pull pots with the 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 printed you know the circuit board on the on the side of the pot that's got the holes on so these holes are actually very very small um and obviously because the the plating here does make your solder flow uh, and you're in danger of filling up both holes and which isn't a problem but if you do need to put another wire in um, you need to <clears throat> remove the solder first. So for that reason, I've actually got two different diameters of solder here. Uh, I would recommend using the thinner one. Um, less is more in that sense. So this is actually 0.7 mil diameter, uh, which is 22 standard wire gauge. Um, 
and for some of the other the, the bigger joints here on the pot for example i'll use 18 standard wire gauge which is 1.2 mil in metric speak okay so that's that one then on to the next connection okay so the next connection is actually from the same point b and that is actually going to the uh the output that's the middle lug of the first tone control um so thankfully i didn't fill that hole with solder by mistake um again use tape if you need i shouldn't need it on this occasion but rather be safe than sorry Push the cloth back down, and then, like I say, this is going to the middle of the first tone control, which is nice and standard. Fill it through, I'll fill the eyelet. Okay, moving on. Okay, so next up we need to connect um, contact A to the one directly next to it, which is MH. So I'm just using a, a jumper wire of, of cloth wire here. Um, it might actually be easier because the distance is quite small. Might be easier, for example, to use um, just a, a tiny length of tinned copper. Um, because there's obviously no danger of it shorting on anything. But cloth wire will do nicely. So it's going to be nice and light with the solder. Just like that. And that's because we need to connect MH to the second tone control. Okay, so MH, um, just put your wire through the second eyelet. So it's going on, doesn't matter which one you put it through, um, the upper or lower, I mean, uh, it does have to have MH written on it. Uh, we'll just flow Go nice and easy on the solder. With the contact points being plated, it flows <coughs> really easily. So obviously it's a printed circuit board, so anyone who's worked on a circuit board before will know that it doesn't take much at all to get the solder to take. Uh, and this is going to the middle lug again of our second tone control just like the other tone control so we'll connect that to middle push the cloth back feed it through <clears throat> Soldier's soldering tip behind it, let it heat up for a second, and then you just flow your soldering through the other side. Push your cloth back down as far as it will go anyway okay we're getting there slowly so there's a couple more connections to make and then we'll put in our pickups 
Okay, so just one final connection on the switch before the pickups, and that is the two solder points on the end there. Uh, BG and BT. We're going to connect these two together, and on, out of the two holes, I'm going to put them into the, the lower ones here, and that's because we do need to put in our pickups afterwards. Um, just makes it easier that way, I guess. Uh, so we'll just pop the wire in. Like so. I guess actually, if you're watching this, and whilst it does look quite fiddly, it's a, it's a good reason to use cloth wire, because cloth wire, especially if it's the tinned, the tinned, well, well the tinned cloth wire, excuse me, I'll get my words out, because um, it's a lot more rigid. Um, or tinned copper, because that's extremely rigid. If you're using PVC, which I would suggest is actually a good idea. Um, the problem with the PVC, however, is it's very flexible. Um, whereas the cloth wire does stay in position far easier. Just like that. So we'll push the cloth back down, just bend it out of the way. And now, finally, we can move on to the pickups. Right, yeah, and so moving on to the pickups. Um, what I've done, that I, this is what I tend to do is standard and recommend it to, to anyone who's putting pickups into a strat. Um, twist the, the signal and the ground wires together like so. Uh, it, it does help towards reducing unwanted shall we say uh feedback although it might limit some of the natural feedback that some people do love um but because it's a 10-way switch and um, because we've got series and parallel switching options um generally it is going to be more vulnerable to feedback so you want to try and reduce that as much as you can so use a good grounding plate get all your good ground connections done um obviously ensure the jack is properly grounded which is the key um and obviously and also twist your pickup wires together as well. Um, you don't have to, of course, and not many factory guitars will. Um, but I just want to show you that uh, these pickups are BCP, Black Country pickups. It's actually a set I wound myself during the first lockdown. Um, they are available to purchase. Uh, pretty standard, really. You've got three identical pickups but with a middle one reverse round. Uh, reverse phase. Anyway, enough of that. That's not the point of the video. So what we're going to do, get your pickups ready and out of the way. So, zoom back into the switch. Our neck pickup ground wire is going to NG, neck ground. Now it's the only connection we make on this tab here, so it doesn't matter which hole we put it into, be it the lower or the upper. So I'm just going to put it into the lower. Um, so get your wires out the way. Cut it to length. Push the cloth back and we'll just pop it in the lower one. So, so I'm just holding the iron on the edge there, just behind the wire. Let the heat do its transfer, let the heat do its magic. I'm just flowing in literally the tiniest amount you can possibly put in. Using the thinner wire, as we discussed earlier, I will go over that just at the end. So that's our neck pickup ground wire. Our neck signal wire, the hot, is actually going to the tab directly next to it in the, where's my other stick? In the upper bank. So we'll just pop this in here. So again, we'll just cut the wire to length.
same again always be uh, with with anything that's got a circuit board on it and obviously the connections are quite small uh, and very specific so we want to be <clears throat> as accurate as we can so less is more in that sense use as little sole as you can because you don't want the you don't want them to start touching other contacts that they shouldn't Okay, that's the neck pickup. Let's move on to the middle on the bridge. Okay, okay. So the middle pickup, the signal wire, that is going to solder point A. So the upper bank there, or whichever one you've left empty, there is already a connection there, but only one. So whichever hole you've got left, just thread it through. Flow in your solder. Let it cool, it just takes three or four seconds. The middle ground wire gets popped onto the, onto the main ground doesn't get put on the switch so we'll pop that onto the volume pot casing just next to the other one so push your cloth back get it nice and secure Let the heat do its magic. Oh, excuse me. Flow in your solder. Like so. And finally, the bridge pickup. Okay, so the bridge pickup. The bridge signal the hot wire is going into the terminal right at the end here, which is labeled BH, which obviously stands for uh, bridge hot. So we're just gonna pop that in there. Again, it's the only connection on this uh, terminal here, so it doesn't really matter which hole you put it in, upper or lower. Excuse me, I've not quite that's not quite rigid enough. Just like so. And the bridge pickup ground wire is going into the lug directly, or the contact directly next to it, which is this one here, BT, it's upside down. And obviously we've, we have already got a connection in there. So we're just gonna pop it in the upper hole, or whichever one you left spare, just thread it through. Feed in your solder, wait for it to set. Like so. Now, obviously, I, I'm not going to do this in the video um, because this will be going to a customer. However, the the main ground from your bridge, just as in any other wiring setup, um, needs to go to ground. So 
It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's connected to ground, but typically you'd put it onto the top of the volume pot. And, and obviously your jack socket, so the signal wire from your jack gets uh, put into the output. That's the middle lug of the volume control. And the jack ground wire, again, goes to ground. And that is how you wire up a 10-way blade switch. Um, so I appreciate, actually, you haven't really learned anything new uh, in terms of technique or anything there. Um, this is, the, like I say, this is the first time I've wired up one of these uh, blade switches. And we have just used the wiring diagram that's available on the Freeway website. They do have a couple of different variations for the Strat. They've only, I think they've got one or two, maybe even one variation for the Telecaster. Um, but they have a lot of options for the Les Paul, the three-way or uh, well, six-way toggle switch, which we will be exploring in a future video. Um, so just a couple of remarks and comments from my experience, a couple of tips on that. So it's a circuit board. Um, it's not fiddly and it's very, very easy to wire, but obviously the holes are, are, are very close together. So for that reason, um, it's a phrase I keep referring to more and more. Um, <clears throat> less is more. So you literally want to, the best way to control the amount of solder you pop in is to use um, a solder that's got a smaller diameter than others. So most most standard stuff that you buy from a DIY shop will be this diameter. This is 1.2. As you can see, it's actually quite meaty. Um, it's perfect for doing joints on top of pots like that. You get a nice, shiny, smooth, round joint out of it. But when you're working on a circuit board um, like this, for example, or a CTS push pull pot, I'd really encourage you to use the thinnest diameter you can find. Um, this is not this is 0.7 mil, which is 22 standard wire gauge. And as you can see, um, it's well, it's not quite half the diameter of the other one, but it's near enough. Um, so you just need to try and control the amount of solder you put in as much as possible because these contacts are they're deceivingly close together. Um, so if you were to flood it with solder, you could easily have them connecting two points together that you don't want to um that's it really guys thank you very much for watching um if you have any questions or any comments please don't hesitate to get in touch um the next video we're going to be moving on to the the, the three-way version so the six-way telecaster blade switch wiring we'll pop that in uh, that will probably come up on youtube in the next uh seven to ten days or so depends on a few other things we've got going on um happy new year um i hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you real soon in the next video